Hello and welcome to another video on the HP 50G graphing calculator. We're going to take a look at the display and what you see in the display. First of all, on the right hand side, we have the date and time. And uh, you can make that disappear or leave it there. It's an option that you can choose with a tick mark and we'll show you how in a while. Then for the section two, along the same line with the time and date, we have there the end of the directory path. You will see we have a slash mark in front of the physics directory and the subdirectory path would be something above the physics then below the physics would be test and mags. Then we have on the left side the stack line numbers. You're only going to see these line numbers if you're in the RPN mode. And again, we will get to that. But it's very useful to have the line numbers on the left as we shall soon see. Then on the very top of the display, we have the angle unit, either D degrees or radians. Then we have the coordinate unit system, which can be X, Y, Z or R theta uh, with an angle. So we can have angular or polar or rectangular coordinate systems. Then we have the base N mode, which is hexadecimal. X for short. Then we have the real number mode. You'll either see a real or a big C. Uh, the calculator allows for a real number mode which restricts you and will not show complex solutions. Or if you go to the complex mode, have the big C there, you will see both complex and real solutions. So if you want to limit yourself to stop all complex um, notation then you would stick with the real if you want the complex well the complex also includes the real and then that little wavy sign there for A it shows that we are in approximate mode which means that numerical solutions will be developed which are of course approximate the alternative to the approximate mode is the exact mode and of course in the exact mode it will try to avoid all decimal rounding or whatever. So we leave it in the approximate mode most of the time because if we're interested in numerical solutions, they don't always come out to a perfect number. And then finally over there, nine, we see that X is the independent variable used in graphing, plotting, and solving, which we will learn about later on. Okay, so what we've done here is we've moved the calculator uh, up directory. We've used the up directory key to move up so that you can see that home is the root directory. When you get the calculator and you haven't created any directories, you have the home directory, which is the same as the C directory on your hard drive. And uh, we are there. We're able to see right up to the top so you're seeing the uh, left hand brace in front of home which shows that our path hasn't gone down far enough into nested directories to make it necessary to scroll over the other thing we're going to see on this screen is that when we're looking at our variables which appear in those little square black boxes which we're going to see how we access them in a minute those little square rectangular boxes that you see there at the bottom of the screen, they contain either directory, subdirectories, or variables, just like what you would have in your normal uh, tree on your Windows computer. And the presence of a small little bar over the most, the leftmost letter indicates that that's a subdirectory. So when you activate that button, you will drop down to the goal directory underneath, whereas all the others on that line do not have a little bar above it. So they are just simple variables which can be any of the objects 
we studied in lesson one. So you can see your subdirectory a little carefully, a little more better there with the physics, where you can see the line over the P, and uh, we can see the ordinary variable object. Now, when we type, whatever we type and press enter, it goes into the line one. And then if we type something else and press enter, it, go, it pushes whatever was in line one up to line two. Um, so whatever is the most currently recent thing that we entered on the calculator will be in line one. And as we enter more, they all get pushed up to higher and higher line numbers. So what we're trying to do now is we're trying to create a new variable just to show you how it's done. So we've typed in 1.2345, which is going to be the contents. That's what's going to be actually the contents of our variable. And then we type in the variable name. We use the tick marks, single tick marks. Uh, so whenever you press the tick mark button, it creates two tick marks and allows you to type between them. So we just type in N6, and we'll get to the input soon enough. So that's the point. That's the order. We have the contents and then the name that we want to name it. And then we press the store button, store key. So once we press the store key, it disappears from one and two, and a new variable is created on the left, which pushes all the other variables over to the right. Now to access those variables that are shown on the screen, the six buttons below act as soft keys. As you can see, each of those buttons below is associated with the particular rectangular bar on the screen. So if you want to bring the new variable that we've created, just now the N6, which is shown there on the left, back onto the calculator screen in the position of the first one, you merely press it. So you just press the F1 A key and pop N6. The contents of N6 appear back on the screen as shown. Finally, we are showing here the calculator is in complex mode. We wanted to show you that. So we have a big C up there instead of our R. And we have a complex number in rectangular form which has a very large fractional part. So the arrow on the right side means that the whole entry for line one is too big to show on the screen. And this is going to happen quite regularly with big objects or with um, uh, matrices and all that. You can't see the whole thing in one line. So there are ways to get around that. And again, this is um, coming up, but we have, to, we have to go step by step. So finally, we have left and right shift keys on the calculator. And whenever you press the left shift key, which is obviously a left, pointing arrow as shown there. It comes up in the display at the top to let you know that you press the left shift key. You don't have to hold it down. You press the left shift key and there it comes up at the top. And if you then after pressing the left shift key, turn around and press the soft key associated with N6, which once again would be the F1A, then uh, it stores that complex number into N6. So the contents of our N6 variable have been replaced. It's no longer 1.23456. It's now that complex number which was in the level one or line one, which has disappeared and gone into the variable. Finally, we can bring up a catalog Notice there where I've circled on the keyboard above the symbol key, the SYMB with a P next to it. On the right at the top, each of the keys on the keyboard has a white and an orange component. 
that is uh, uh, um, activated by pressing the right or left shift key. So since the catalog is on the right at the top, we first press the right shift key, and then when we press the symbol button, up pops the catalog. Now the calculator has 771 commands. That's a lot of commands to scroll through. But you can shorten the list because if you know the first letter of the command that you want to use, you simply enter the letter on the keyboard. So if I say press N, it will quickly jump down to the beginning of the N section. So you can actually shorten the amount that you need to scroll through. And of course, you can use the up and down arrow button to scroll through the list in the normal way. When you've reached one that you want to select, you can then press the OK button. So as you can see, we've scrolled down until the word purge is highlighted and we have pressed the soft key associated with OK on the right and we have deleted a whole list of variables in level one at one go. You can't see the list entirely, but you can see the rightmost brace above the OK along with N1. Well, right underneath that menu box is a complete list of variables going from the left brace to the right brace. And once again, it was so easy to enter that list because once we had pressed the brace key, it put both braces on the screen and all we had to do was press any of the soft keys and the name of the soft key would appear on the screen. So that's a quick way to delete a whole lot of variables that you no longer need from a problem at one go. Once the braces are on the screen, pressing the soft key does not bring up the contents onto the screen anymore. Rather, it puts the name in the list. Well, that's enough for today. Thanks for watching the Stephen Mendes channel, and we'll see you in the next video. If you have any comments or suggestions, please make them down below as we seek to make the videos more meaningful for you.